Hi folks, Doc here. It's a pretty decent Sunday morning and uh, I can tell you I had a heck of a lot of fun beating the crap out of the diesel weasel yesterday and shooting the big reveal video which I hope you watched. Um, that was that was just a ride. I had a ball. Uh, anyways, I know some of you folks are going to want to see a little bit uh, more detail on the build. So I'm going to take you a little walk around and uh, point at some of the tourist attractions. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, it's pretty sunny this morning, so I'm having a lot of trouble with shadow. But uh, I'll do my best to point out some of the tourist attractions to you guys. And uh, see if I can figure out where to begin. Obviously, I've done a lot of work to this thing. It certainly isn't what it used to be. And uh, if you've been following along with the build videos, you'll know that uh, you know a lot of the things that have occurred already so I'll just try and pick you up to speed on some of the stuff that, you know, didn't get covered in the more recent videos. Since I'm not sure where to start, I guess I'm just going to start. Uh, as you know, the tub was painted black from the factory. And uh, I ended up stripping all the black paint off. And uh, I shot it yellow, which of course was way too bright to uh, come even close to matching the hood. So, boy, the shadow's brutal, eh? So anyways, I shot it in the yellow, and then I fogged it with white to take some of the brightness out of the yellow. Uh, and then I fogged it with flat brown to kind of make it look a little dirtier and rustier. And then I concentrated the brown in a bunch of locations to, you know, simulate some rust. And uh, then I took some brown paint and I thinned it down. And with an eyedropper, I shot it into a bunch of the seams and stuff and just made it run down kind of like rust sort of wood. The fenders were actually the original rear fenders off, you know, the machine as it was from the factory. And uh, I narrowed them down. They were, I think, about an inch and a half wider than they are now. And I just narrowed them down to fit and then sunk them in there so that they'd you know, you'd get that wheel sticking out, you know, rat rod sort of look. Uh, then I took six or seven feet of chain. Well, I shouldn't say then I took, because obviously I welded the chain on first. Uh, but I ran the chain around the entire top of the tub and down the one side that's exposed. Uh, partially to hide the cut edge. And uh, partially just to, you know, dress it up, stiffen it up. You know, make things generally better. The only thing I did to the hood was uh, clear coat it really. Um, I painted on the oil derrick and you know the diesel weasel lettering by hand with a paintbrush and some black trim clad and uh, I just shot the hood and cowl and all that with some flat clear. Um, I did that well I shouldn't say fat, flat it was matte which still has a bit of a sheen to it um, but I actually wound up doing that to the hood, the grill, the fenders uh, the tub and the floorboards. Uh, the floorboards, as you can see, I never did repaint. Uh, in fact, I took a sander to them and took off a bunch of the paint, you know, giving a kind of weathered and worn look, and then shot them in the flat clear. A particular area of interest is the rear end. Um, obviously, there's kind of a lot going on there from a visual perspective. And again, I apologize for the shadow. It's just so damn bright out here. Uh, so I made some bumperettes out of the same aluminum tread plate as I did the dashboard out of, and I'll get to the dashboard in a minute, and shot them in the copper. The trunk, as it were, is a Sears Suburban SS16 fuel tank with the filler cut off, and uh, you know, I riveted on a hasp, and I've got that custom motorcycle tail light with an LED bulb in it, an old motorcycle license plate from 1976, which I found, which is kind of cool. And the lock's neat too. The lock is 100 years old or so, I'm still trying to gather information on it. And uh, I never got a key for this lock. I was actually able to make a key with some sheet metal and a grinder and got the lock open so I could lock it around the hasp without cutting anything. I was happy with the way that turned out. So the SS-16 fuel tank, as you can see a little detail line on there to make it look like it opens. It doesn't currently. I might make it do that in the future. And all I did was mask off a line about a sixteenth of an inch and shot that with some brown so it looked like it had a lid. Uh, you can see that I took the logos off the steam whistle tap handle brake handle and uh, shot it with the copper paint and then glued the logos back on. 
that seemed to work. Uh, and the dashboard is the diamond plate aluminum shot in copper. And you've got the ignition switch on there, the compression relief, the headlight switch, and the flamethrower controls there. Uh, on the steering wheel, you can see I took a genuine, you know, number 40 sprocket and painted it up with the sprockets garage lettering and blah, 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 and screwed it to the steering wheel because I definitely needed some kind of visual interest there. The forward portion of the exhaust has been wrapped with a mineral-based header wrap. It's not fiberglass. It's, they call it lava rock. It's mineral-based. And they called the color titanium look, and in another description it was, uh, um, what you call it, uh, carbon fiber look. I don't know, it's got kind of a bronzish color to it, which I thought for a rat rod was absolutely perfect. Um, white would have just looked, I don't know, too white. And if I can kind of re-angle the camera here, you can see the CVT behind the guarding there. I shot that in copper too, because I wanted it to stand out a little bit with the... Uh, expanded metal mesh there serving as a guard you know it kind of hid the CVT so I shot that in copper as well so that you could see the driver and the driven a little bit better okay moving to the front uh, on the front of the Kubota air filter canister um, I bolted on the fan blade from a Delco 10SI alternator after giving it a little bit of a paint treatment to make it look older and uh, you know it doesn't actually do anything but thought it looks pretty cool and I've got that centerpiece in the middle of the transverse leaf spring. It's uh, it's another number 40 sprocket, this one off uh, off a motorcycle. Uh, it's about two and a half inches in diameter or so. It's just a small little hood ornamenty looking thing. <clears throat> now the teeth, if you look really closely, you can see that there's actually a little bit of rust on the teeth. I was originally going to shoot the teeth in uh, white trim clad because they're iron. And then I realized that if I use water-based paint, I'll get a little bit of flash rust. And that's the effect I was looking for. So I shot those, not shot, painted by brush, uh, in the same white craft paint that I did the tire lettering with. Just bring the camera over here for a second, refresh your memory. So just white craft paint, you know, a dollar and a half off the dollar store shelf, whatever. Then I was trying to figure out what to do with the two eyelets on the end of that transverse leaf spring and uh, I found some neat little LED marker lights at Princess Auto that fit the spaces just about perfectly. I'll throw the lights on for a second but you know in the daylight I don't know. <clears throat> there you go. So we've got the two three inch halogen headlights and then the two seven eighths inch LED marker lights up front there. The more astute amongst you will notice that I actually moved the shifter arm over about six inches. If you look really closely, I don't know if the lighting will allow this, it actually says Craftsman on the section of bar that comes out six inches sideways because that was a piece of a chisel that I had to hack up because I didn't have any more half inch bar stock, but that half inch chisel was about perfect, so there it is. And as you can see in the process yesterday, I lost the pivot bolt for the brake handle, or not the bolt, the nut, um, because the bolt was a little bit too short, so I am going to replace that. There's the fuel filter. It's one of those clear glass jobbies that you can take apart and clean. I think this one was branded Mr. Gasket, but I can't remember. It's been a few years since I purchased that. I bought it for another build and, you know, it just wound up stagnating. Um, and I figured that was, uh, that was a pretty good purpose for it, putting it here. It's a little bit obscured by the control panel. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of short for space because of that big coil of copper there, but, you know, yes, I did get the fuel filter. The installed. seat uh, was a banquet chair. I actually got a few of them as a roadside score and uh, cut the legs off it. Reshaped the back a little bit because it actually came, well, in earlier video and picture, you can see that the back came up to here and it just made a little handle and I didn't think that looked right. So I reshaped the back and Amy reupholstered the seat in genuine Mexican blanket and uh, she left these tassels hanging off the back too which kind of fly in the breeze a little bit that's kind of cool I think. I had some people inquiring about the battery and it is so buried there's not much chance of seeing anything at all but if you see that copper strap there there's actually two uh, that's the battery kind of hiding under the control panel under the seat and behind the jack shaft. That is a 12 volt 25 amp hour AGM 
that came out of one of those battery boost boxes. Uh, I had this boost box for years. That battery is probably seven or eight years old now. Uh, it still contains, it still holds enough juice to get this pig started, which is great. Uh, it's compact. It didn't matter which angle I put it on or anything like that. Uh, it was five inches tall, so I had enough room by, you know, sinking it a little bit. Um, obviously, a standard lawn tractor battery wouldn't have fit no matter what. I was looking at AGM lawn tractor batteries that I could lay on their side, and they wanted like $120 locally for one, and I certainly wasn't going to pay that. When I was engineering the flamethrower, I was desperately seeking a fuel tank that would fit under the hood next to the diesel tank. I was hoping to find one the same size and shape as the existing diesel tank under the hood uh, so I could hide it. And for the life of me, I couldn't find one. Then it occurred to me that I could hide the fuel tank for the flamethrower in plain sight. And uh, this nitrous oxide bottle was my solution. I fabricated that out of a disposable propane cylinder, one of the fat ones, and painted it blue and bought a NOS sticker, nitrous oxide system sticker online, fabricated a bracket, welded some bungs to it, blah, 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 blah. I've got a dummy pressure gauge there, as you can see, and the line coming off it is just a vent, and all that does is, uh, you know, it's like a carburetor vent or, you know, a motorcycle vent or whatever, and, uh, you know, if, if I get a little bouncy and it splashes some fuel through the vent, the hose just brings it down and dumps it on the ground instead of, you know, spilling it in my pan. So I've got the combination of yellows on the bodywork and, you know, the green and red of the footboards kind of ties in uh, with the red of the engine shroud, the brake master cylinder, the brake caliper, and the wheels. Uh, and then the copper treatments are as follows, and they started with the copper, coiled copper fuel line and extended to the air box. I shot the headlight buckets in copper. Uh, I shot the steering linkages in copper. The brake handle. And that motorcycle tail light. The control panel. And the little bumperettes. If you're interested, I've got some specifications for you here. The weasel here, dry weight, is 334 pounds. The track width at the front is 42 inches. The track width at the rear is 44 inches. The wheelbase is 48 and a half inches. Uh, my overall gear ratio is four to one. That's obviously with the CVT, you know, jacked up in the high range. Uh, my ground clearance at the lowest point, which is under the engine, is an inch and three quarters off the road. And my measured top speed yesterday was 78 kilometers an hour, which is 48 and three quarter miles an hour. And uh, I was really hoping to be able to squeak 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles an hour out of it. And uh, obviously I'm very, very close. I'm actually closer than I expected, uh, you know, on the first major speed run without really doing any tweaking to it. Um, so I'm quite confident that I'll be able to break 50 miles an hour on this thing. I think that pretty well covers the between updates stuff that you didn't see. Um, I can tell you that this was a pretty challenging build, all things considered. Um, I had thought that the worst of it was getting that big engine into that little tiny space and then all the hard stuff was over. And I can honestly tell you that was not the case. This thing was a challenging mofo from one end to the other. But it was a fun build. Uh, I did have a good time, you know, engineering it and making the parts fit. Um, I had a especially good time trying to engineer certain aspects of it, like the flamethrower system. <clears throat> now the flamethrower system is something that I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about. If there is sufficient interest, uh, perhaps I will do a video on how I engineered the flamethrower system. Um, I've looked around on YouTube and I've seen a couple of flamethrower systems, none of them on a diesel. Um, you know, one guy just, you know, shot propane out of his exhaust and yada, yada, yada. Um, obviously, it's done a little bit differently on a gasoline engine, typically anyways, uh, on a full-size car. And, uh, you know, I had to engineer this system from start to finish. Anyways, um, if there's enough interest, then perhaps I'll do a video on the flamethrower. Uh, meantime, back at the farm, uh, this thing was fun to build. It's a riot to drive. I'm sure I'm not done tweaking it yet. Um, but, you know, this was built for fun and for the all-terrain lawn tractor form 2016 build-off competition. 
and I would encourage everyone who is a member to get in there and vote starting the end of November. I think we're going to have two weeks for voting. Uh, if you're not a member, obviously it's free to join and get in there and vote and I'm kind of asking you to vote for me. I think that I've built something really unique and entertaining here and uh, well, quite frankly, I'd appreciate a win this year. That said, uh, this little project of mine, being what it is, kind of cool and unique and a lot of fun, um, I'm asking you to share the heck uh, out of that reveal video that I made yesterday uh, with the flames and all that stuff. I'd really like to see, you know, a boost in the YouTube views and, uh, you know, general viewer consumption. I'd really appreciate that. I'd love to see it. And, uh, you know, enough of a boost in there will dr drive me to continue doing, you know, unique projects and entertaining stuff like that. Anyhow, thanks for watching and sharing and subscribing to Sprockets Garage on YouTube. And until next time, take care of yourself.